I have absolutely been in love with this role. I love Sylvia. When I was auditioning, I started to do some research and just finding out about her and seeing the interviews um, of Sylvia. There is footage of her uh, as an older woman, and she is just this amazing character. Ernest Hemingway said that she was like a little animal, and watching her, you know, in her 60s, I guess it was, watching that interview, I, was, I just wanted to capture her, that energy that she still had, and I wonder what was that like when she was 29, when she was in love and in Paris, and so, and she's, so that's really been uh, really fun for me, and she had a very particular way of speaking, and uh, kind of, almost like a jittery energy, which has been really fun and interesting for me to try to jump into her skin. <laughs> As an artist, for me, to really stand inside someone that was such an incredible individual and try to do her justice has been really exciting. She said that her two passions in life were Adrian, her lover, and uh, James Joyce. So she worked diligently to um, meet James Joyce when he came to Paris and eventually publish uh, Ulysses, Ulysses, which had been banned in the United States and called Smut and all this. And, and then her and Adrian worked on uh, getting it translated to uh, French and uh, it was really her life's work. Um, and eventually her interaction with James uh, it became a very close friendship, but she ended up lending a lot of money to him, and it pulled the shop down in, in a lot of ways and her business. Um, but I think that uh, I think she would have said that it was worth it. Um, so she was she's quite a strong, independent, amazing woman, especially of that time. So pretty pretty exciting character. Sylvia uh, is a, was an American. Um, who moved to Paris. She had lived in Paris as a child. Her father was a minister and she had um, traveled uh, with her family. Um, but she moved to Paris after, uh, before the war, before World War I, and she always dreamed of opening a bookshop. And eventually she opened a very famous bookshop called Shakespeare and Company uh, at 12 Rue Odeon in Paris on the left bank. And this it was an English bookshop, so what she did was sell English and American work, you know, authors, to individuals that wanted to read the work in its original language. So, and also, she really brought together the community of artists, um, along with her lover, Adrian, who also owned a bookshop, um, and she would bring the the artists, the writers, and the poets together and, and kind of have a salon uh, in the shop and get this person to meet this person, uh, plan events and be part of the artistic world in, in that way and uh, really facilitate all this energy and modernist movement, promoting the modernists. Uh, during the 1920s. The other uh, aspect uh, of Sylvia, and, and even she even mentioned her two loves being James Joyce and you know, Adrian, and I think that this is an important story too because of their their love affair, Adrian and Sylvia, and uh, you know that this would be it's hard enough, you know, in 2011 to have society accept who. You, choose to love or be with, and um, that these two women were strong enough to uh, fight for one another and stand by one another as true partners um, in business and in love. I think that's something. So I think to represent that relationship um, is important, and, um, and I want to do that justice uh, because I think it's a very great love affair. And uh, and and the wonderful thing about it is that this, you know, their group and their 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 peers and society knew that they were a couple, and it was accepted and it was embraced. And Sylvia, you know, she grew up in a very puritanical uh, environment, and it was a challenge for her, I think, to feel that you know accepted. Uh, 
but they did it, and I think I think that story is very important, very important, and I think that we we could learn from that today. The other uh, amazing and exciting aspect of all this was the the period and it being the twenties, which is in my mind the most romantic and uh, fascinating time in American history, particularly for women. So much was beginning to happen, uh, so liberating and so sexy, and, and uh, it's very hot right now too. So, um, And the art from that period is just exquisite. So I think that part of it has been very, very cool, very, very exciting to be part of that too. So it feels like you're back there, and that's kind of a neat place to be.